Salutations to respected viewers. This is uh, George from Ireland. Here I am in Edinburgh uh, at 56 George Square. You can see that uh, round plaque behind me. Because this marks the house where Eric H. Diddle resided whilst he was an undergraduate. Um, he is best known for uh, being an Olympic gold medalist in the 400 uh, metres, the 1924 Paris Olympics. And if you're a zealous Christian, you might also know that he was an ardent missionary in China in the 1920s, 30s and 40s, right up until the day he died. Uh, so there have been countless uh, Olympic gold medalists, but why has he had a biopic made of him? You might have seen the 1981 film uh, directed by Hugh Hudson, Chariots of Fire. Well, Eric Little stands out for a number of reasons. Uh, he was born in China in 1902 to British missionary parents uh, and in that sense he is the first Chinese uh, Olympic, Olympic gold medalist so the Chinese claim him to this day. Um, his parents were there in China uh, evangelizing for Christianity. Um, so uh, Little came back to the United Kingdom and he went to school at Caterham if I've got that right um, which was a school specifically set up for uh, the uh, sons of missionaries. His parents were Congregationalists. His father was a minister in the church. Women couldn't be ordained in those days, but his mother was uh, very actively supportive of her husband's mission. So uh, Little had a um, few siblings. Anyway, uh, he finished at Caterham School, and then he came here to the University of Edinburgh. His parents were from Scotland, by the way, but he'd been to school in England. Uh, and here he read natural sciences. Um, he had just missed out on the fighting in the First World War. He was too young, lucky for him. Uh, and he was an exceptionally gifted sportsman uh, and he indeed he played rugger for Scotland but uh, he was even better at athletics and he um, competed in some university athletic competitions he was the champion of Edinburgh University I think the 100 meters the 200 meters often in this country they ran the 75 yard dash a yard being about 91 centimeters is not a very long race but it wasn't an, an Olympic uh, distance um, anyway and he was also doing well uh, in his studies. So he was selected for the British Olympic team for the 1924 Olympics to be held in Paris, the second one to be held in Paris. They're about to have their, um, their third Olympics Paris, putting them on a par with, Par with London for holding it thrice. Anyhow, uh, several months before um, the Olympics, the timetable was published and Little discovered that his heats for the 100 meters, and I think I got that right, the 200, uh, were on a Sunday. No can do. He was um, absolutely passionate about his faith and he refused to uh, train on a Sunday. He wouldn't do anything on a Sunday other than the things which were essential, such as washing and eating. Yes, he would go to church, he would read, he would read the Bible. Now, other athletes saying, we are training seven days a week, even if it's your birthday, even if it's Christmas Day, we are training. We're absolutely committed. You do everything you possibly can every waking minute to train. But he would not run on a Sunday, even to practice. He considered that to be immoral. He was a Sabbatarian. Um, uh, Protestants in those days tended to be very rigid about that one. No Sunday trading, often they wouldn't travel on a Sunday, they wouldn't read Sunday newspapers, they thought that was immoral, reading the Bible a little else, and they wouldn't even let their children play on a Sunday, they wouldn't play cards on a Sunday, they sometimes go to church up to three times on a Sunday. Uh, even eating cold food which had been prepared on Saturday, if they had a party on Saturday night it had to be over, they all had to be in bed by midnight. So uh, Eric Little was one of those people. Although there was certain, some joviality to him, he was very serious when it came to uh, religious matters. Um, so unlike the film, he did not find out this at the last minute. He came under sustained pressure for months to cave in. Um, the uh, president of the British Athletic Association, I can't remember the peer's name, he tried to strong arm Little into saying, can you not make an exception just once? Because he was lionized by the press and he was the hero of Scotland. Finally, someone to look up to who wasn't a soldier. People were sick of fighting. Um, and obviously the evangelical Christian movement was delighted with him. They would like to think it was a sign of divine favor that Little was uh, performing so uh, extraordinarily well in all these athletic competitions. Um, but no, he would not bend and they tried to uh, morally blackmail him. Oh, but come on, you'd be so much more famous. You could do so much um, for Jesus. This is just break the rule just once and do so much for the Lord's work. But no, he was, he was not going to give in. He, he never wavered on that point. So they had to put him in for other events. And also featured in that film are Harold Abrahams, who was Jewish. There's a peer of the realm who's um, a fictitious character who's loosely based on a real character. But anyway, so he, he went to the... Um, Paris Olympics, it was agreed he'd race for the 400 metres, which was not his event. 
um, he had a very odd uh, running style, throwing his head back and waving his arms like that. Somehow he made it. It was also uh, an extraordinary race, um, a match I think between Scotland and the Republic of Ireland, where he'd um, been jostled by the crowd who weren't properly held back. He fell down and the other runners got ahead of him. He was on the ground for about five seconds, but he got up and in the most unexampled breakthrough, he managed to catch them up and overtake them and win. And that was in something like a 200 meter race where five seconds is an eternity. So um, it was a really outstanding performance by Lidl. So uh, he went to Paris um, and he did indeed win. He carried off gold medals for the uh, 400 meters. And had he, had he broken with his rule, he would have been in the 100 meters as well. The 200 meters, he would have been in the relay as well. He would have come home with not just one gold medal, but probably a few. Um, so that was that. So. Um, uh, he was so lionised by the press that uh, uh, the church was very eager to have him to preach. Now, uh, he was actually a, a poor public speaker. You can't be brilliant at everything. So he went to towns and he would um, preach to people who were not especially religious, to working class congregations, many of whom were not regular churchgoers, and the appeal was seeing this Olympian. Um, he was so adulated, even before the Paris Olympics, he'd been carried shoulder high to the railway station. Likewise, when he um, won, when he graduated from Edinburgh University, he was wearing a laurel wreath, a victor's crown, and he was carried through the gates near that building. I can't remember what it's called. Is it the McEwen building, that huge dome supplied by a brewer? I'm pretty sure he was, he was abstemious when it came to alcohol and uh, he didn't smoke. Not because tobacco was unhealthy, people didn't even know that until 1950 in Richard Doll's paper, but just he thought it was unethical. So that was that. So um, he married shortly afterwards to uh, a missionary daughter from Canada and uh, he moved to China where there he was um, uh, preaching the gospel to the benighted heathen as he would have seen it. And he organized athletic competitions there. He had three daughters. Then. And the Second World War was drawing close, so he decided he should send his wife and his three children to Canada for their safety, and indeed they departed. Uh, and he was in China when the Japanese invaded um, and uh, the, the rump of China, and uh, they, then they went to war against the United Kingdom, so he was interned as an enemy alien, held in an internment camp near Shanghai, where um, he lived up to his principles and he was very unselfish. And when there were some bitter rows between uh, two groups of internees, he mediated between, it, between them because they trusted him to do so in an even-handed manner. When it was discovered that some of the wealthier prisoners um, were paying to bring in eggs from else, uh, elsewhere, he publicly confronted them, he embarrassed them into sharing their food. Uh, was that an underhand tactic? You could say so, but it, it was certainly doing good for the majority. So that was Eric Little. Unfortunately, he fell very ill in 1945, and Churchill considered whether they should intercede with the Japanese, could he be released? Uh, because um, he was held in such high regard in the United Kingdom. I don't think the UK did intercede, and in the end, he died at the age of 43 in China, and indeed he is buried there. So that is um, Eric Little. Uh, certainly he's an inspiration to the evangelical Christian movement, and this is where he lived, when he, where he was reading um, Natural Sciences on George Square in the heart of Edinburgh's University District.